My drum hollowed out through the thin slit carved from the cedar wood, the base I took when the tree was felled. Oh, my lute, wrought from the tree's crown. My drum, whose lustiness was not to be resisted. My lute, from whose pulsations not one could turn away. They are where the dead are. My drum fell where the dead are. Who will bring it up? My lute, who will bring it up where it fell in the face of them where they are? Where my lute and drum have fallen? The lilac moon of earth's backyard, which gives silence to the whole house, falls down out of the sky, over the fence. Poor planet, now reduced to disuse, who looks so big and alive. I am talking to you. The shades on the windows of the center's place, half down, like nobody else's, lets the glass lower halves make quiet mouths at you, lilac moon, old backyard bloom. I have had to learn the simplest things last, which made for difficulties. Even at sea I was slow to get the hand out or to cross a wet deck. The sea was not finally my trade, but even my trade, at it, I stood estranged from that which was most familiar, was delayed and not content with man's argument that such postponement is now the nature of obedience, that we are all late in a slow time, that we grow up many, and the single is not easily known. It could be, though the sharpness, the acciotti, I note in others, makes more sense than my own distances. The agilities they show daily who do the world's business, and who do nature's, as I have no sense I have done either. I have made dialogues, have discussed ancient texts, have thrown what light I could, offered what pleasures dociate allows. But the known? This I have had to be given, a life, love, and from one man the world. Tokens. But sitting here I look out as a wind and water man, testing and missing some proof. I know the quarters of the weather, where it comes from, where it goes. But the stem of me, this I took from their welcome or their rejection of me. And my arrogance was neither diminished nor increased by the communication. It is undone business I speak of this morning, with the sea stretching out from my feet. Colored pictures of all things to eat, dirty postcards and words, 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 all over everything. No eyes or ears left to do their own doings, all invaded, appropriated, outraged, all senses, including the mind, that worker on what is, and that other sense, made to give even the most wretched, or any of us, wretched, that consolation, greased, lulled, even the streetcar's song. I live underneath the light of day. I am a stone, or the ground beneath. My life is buried with all sorts of passages, both on the sides and on the face turned down to the earth, or built out as long-gifted, generous northeastern Connecticut stone walls are, through which eighteenth-century roads still pass, as though they themselves were realms. The stones they're made up of are from the bottom such ice-age megaliths, and the uplands the walls are the boundaries of are defined with such non-niggardly definition of the amount of distance between a road in and out of the woodlots or further passageways, further farms are given, that one suddenly is walking in Tartarian, Eronian, Gaian, Oranian time and life-love space, time and exact analogy, time and intellect, time and mind, time and time, spirit, the initiation of another kind of nation.